and welcome to our service of communion this morning, which is the first one taking place outside of the church uh, on Sunday the 29th of March. At this point in the service we would normally announce the bands of marriage, but unfortunately, as you know, the, all marriages have been postponed because of the coronavirus crisis. So we'll just keep in your prayers all those young couples and older couples who are going to get married over the next few months in their time of difficulty and sadness. So we just pray for them and ask uh, God's blessing on them at this difficult time. As we start the service, I invite you to say the words uh, that are in the liturgy, if you know them by heart, or if you have the uh, Lent liturgy in front of you. So let us start our service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. The prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> our collect for today. Gracious Father, you gave up your Son out of love for the world. Lead us to ponder the mysteries of his passion, that we may know eternal peace through the shedding of our Saviour's blood, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our reading today is taken from the Gospel of John, and it tells the story of the death of Lazarus. It's quite a long reading. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who, who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after hearing that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews who had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not come yet to the village, but was still at a place where Martha had met him. 
The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt down at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could, he not, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept him from dying? Then again, Jesus, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said, Lord, already there is a stench because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I've said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he'd said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary, had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. <coughs> Just wanting to reflect for a few moments on that story. It's one of the well-known stories in the Bible, this raising of Lazarus. And there are many threads to the story as well, such as friendship, Christ's humanity, and his power in raising Lazarus. And also the story in some way prefigures Jesus' own resurrection. But what I wanted to focus on today was Jesus' compassion. In the reading we've just heard, we realise that Jesus felt compassion, not only in a spiritual level, but on a very human level too. We learn from John's narrative that he wept with his friends Mary and Martha over the loss of their brother Lazarus. Was he weeping for Lazarus or because he was feeling the despair of his two friends who had lost their brother? Or was he uh, weeping for his, himself because he had lost a friend? Jesus had delayed coming to see Lazarus when he found out that he was ill. In verse 6 of the reading, we learn that Jesus stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after that, he had waited a while. He told his disciples that Lazarus was dead and that he meant to go on there to Bethany to see him. But that didn't mean that he felt the emotion of, he didn't feel the emotion of the loss of the death of his friend at a, at a very human level. The story helps to reveal God's glory and Jesus' messiahship. But it also demonstrates God's compassion for all of his people, each at a very individual level. Compassion is often sadly lacking in our world today. And recently our lack of compassion is demonstrated by the single acts of unkindness that we've seen happening across our country during this coronavirus crisis. It may have been fueled by fear, but that doesn't excuse it. As Christians, we are called upon to show compassion for all those who are experiencing trouble and hardship. And Christ is our example, and we must follow his lead, even if it makes us feel uncomfortable and causes us inconvenience. You may know the story of Max Kolb, who was a Roman Catholic priest who was sent to Auschwitz by the Nazi regime. Kolb modelled Christ even in that concentration camp. After being there some time, a group of men were singled out to be executed by being imprisoned in a tiny cramped dungeon where they were left to die of starvation and thirst. One of the men pleaded to be spared as he had a family, and Maximilian Kolb offered to take his place. His request was granted, 
and called died there in an act of pure Christian love and compassion. And that mirrors Christ's own sacrifice on the cross. Having mentioned the acts of unkindness that the pandemic has caused, I must balance that with observations that I have made over the last few days, uh, just responding to people uh, through telephone calls or in conversations as we waited in the shopping queue. I've heard stories of how neighbours and strangers have uh, offered help and kindnesses to the elderly and those who are vulnerable in any way and can't get out of the house to go and do shopping. And it's clear that people's natural inclination is to show love and to show compassion. It is love rather than hate that drives our very being. We're hardwired by God to love. But it's true that sometimes the experiences in life misleads us to do things that are hateful and unkind. So let us give thanks to God that most people are responding to this crisis in the way of love, in the Christian way of loving their neighbour. Let us also give thanks to God for the example of Jesus Christ, who taught us and continues to teach us that compassion and love is what we are called to bring into this world. So let us follow that example today and show love and compassion to all those whom we meet. Amen. the shortened version of the creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Come now to our time of prayer. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we raise our whole community here in Sleaford to you and ask your blessing on us all as we struggle with the impact of this pandemic. We pray for protection for all, but particularly for the elderly in this difficult time. And we pray too for all of our schools, for the staff, who some of whom are having to come in and teach the children of key workers. And for the children who are at home, perhaps with not the same level of education or support that they need. So we pray for all of our children in our community and all teachers and staff who work in schools. And we pray to the Lord for all those who continue to work as key workers in our shops. And we pray for safety for them, lest some people get frightened and agitated and aggressive. So we ask the blessing on them as they do this very necessary work. And we pray too for those who work in banks, making sure that the financial system continues. And we particularly raise to you, Lord, those who, all those who work in the National Health Service in whatever capacity, as they put themselves in danger of having to go in and provide support and care and medical support to all those who are ill for whatever reason, whether that's coronavirus or other diseases and illnesses. So we pray for protection for them and we ask a blessing on them as they do this very necessary work. We pray too for those who continue to serve us in the police force, the fire service, and for those who are the care home staff who are looking after the elderly in isolation. We pray too for all local government staff who continue to work to serve us here in this community. And we pray too for our government, for our Prime Minister, for all of our MPs. And we ask a blessing on all those who are working unseen in the background looking at ways to overcome this virus and treat it. And finally, Lord, we ask your blessing on everyone across the world as we all struggle with this deadly disease. And we pray too for those who have lost loved ones. 
and for those who are ill at this time. So we ask your blessing on all of our world, Lord, in this particular crisis and help us to be compassionate and loving to one another. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Come now to our sacrament of communion, the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. the second Eucharistic prayer which is on page 12. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise almighty God and everlasting Father through Jesus Christ your Son. For in these 40 days you lead us into the desert of repentance that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in peace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open up our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others in the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you're holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, gave you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you send the holy spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of saint Bartolf and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through jesus christ our lord by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. We move now to page 16. We say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen we break this bread to share in the body of christ though we are many 
We are one body because we all share in one bread. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands are unclean. Our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you've taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servants of others, as you were the servants of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And our blessing to send us out into the world, obviously now in this difficult time, only in the, time, the ways that we're supposed to, but let us go out spiritually across the world as well. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.